Hey, what's up, y'all? Matt. Matt here, DeluxeDeluxeFab.com. Hope y'all having a good day. Today, we're going to do a fresh build video. How to build the Asylum. Now, the Asylum is our uh, Capra Axle Sporty. So, this chassis and it was designed as for portal axles. There's slight differences in the chassis design when you go from straight axles to port portal axles or back and forth. We're not getting into that today. Today we're talking assembly, how to build it. So more or less, when you order a, order a Asylum chassis from us, it's gonna come like this, assembled. Here's your, here's your new lightweight body mounts. They're gonna be out here, like so. But more or less, this is how you're gonna receive it. So, in our last video you guys saw, you saw me assemble this front axle with a low center gravity servo mount. I already got the upper links on here because I just mocked this up a few minutes ago. So upper links are already on the front axle. We'll get to that in a minute. Just for fun, I'm going to build this with a TRX4 rear axle. I'm going to use a capper front, a TRX4 rear. Now I don't mind the weights. I'm going to take those off, put the plastic covers back on. I just have to dig through all my stuff and find out where they went. Now the reason I'm doing this, as far as I know, Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. The lowest gear ratio you can get in a, in a 10 scale axle right now is with underdrive gears and your TRX4 axle. So, and then I'm gonna put under gears, underdrive gears in this Capra axle too. And I'll figure out the overdrive later, but I think that's gonna put me at like 8.9 to one, or, or sorry. I think it's 8.9 to one in the rear axle and I think it's 7.9 to 1 in the front so I'll end up doing something a little something a little different to figure out how to get the overdrive underdrive just how I like it but right now my idea is to build the, the most gear reduction in the axles that I can in a 10 scale truck with available parts right now that's really just to kind of suit my own fancies and you know build what I think is cool and we're going to test the theory the theory is, is the, m the more gear reduction in the axles, the less torque twist you'll see at the chassis. Because it's it's less, you need less input here to create motion here. So for every every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? So if you have to turn this eight times or nine times to make this move once, there's a lot less input required here, which means there's going to be a lot less of the reaction on the chassis via torque twist, if that makes sense. So, it's going to show up like this. I already took the, uh, already took these out. These are going to come installed like that, front and rear, as you see. But we're going to pop this off because we need to get to the skid. We're not going to take it all the way apart. We're just going to take out the, these side bolts. Now, you're going to have to put all the all your rod ends on your links when they come from, when we send them out to you. So, if you, if you don't know already, we have this rod and driver tool. So what that does, this is the right one. Bam. Just like that. So when you go drive those rod ends on, you can use your drill or your driver. It makes that so much easier on you. But I've already done all that. So right now we're gonna pull the bolts, all the bolts out of one side. And then just the, just the two skid bolts out of the other to get the skid free. Now another thing to note, since we have this apart, we're looking at the inside of it. This is the front, this is the rear. See these adjustable suspension arms are on the, on the inside of the chassis? That's the way they belong. Now, that will allow you to adjust this up or down so you can easily adjust your ride height whenever you're out on the rocks. If, you, if you're on a course and you know, I need more clearance for this, I need more belly clearance for this course than I do on that other one, you can adjust your belly, your belly height clearance by loosening these two screws and just popping these two out on both sides and you can set your belly height. Now, one thing we've recently included in, the, in, the, in these, there's three holes here one two three three holes here one two three 
you can adjust this for these front arms forward or backwards as well as up and down for your ride height so you can change the shock angle and all that right here as well for your adjustment get your truck dialed in the way you want it nifty feature it's pretty sweet let's go ahead and get this skid free from the side plates excuse the water running guys my hobby room shares shares the space with my washing machine and uh well <laughs> me and the boy we need clean clothes so we're washing clothes now got your skid free the wider two parts those are your for your front links the narrow ones are for your rear because your front links are a good bit shorter than your rears so your rears here's your, your rear lowers here or uppers here and then the, these are your front lowers now when you get this I'm gonna show you here your your front lowers are just a blonde one longer than your front uppers just that much that's the difference so let's change drivers here now these these set screws are already installed in the skid for you you just got to back them out we're going to back out all four I've said it before and I'll say it again guys when you're using a, a, a power driver on these long set screws really anything into printed material or plastic try to keep that speed down on your driver because you'll build up friction and you'll waste the threads in that printed material very quickly nope fell all the way out See, it's in there. So, these yom down here. Now, sometimes I'm going to start these by hand. Sometimes, with this uh, printed material, also with these skid plates, this dimension here across here may be a little snug. If it is, don't be afraid to take your X Acto knife, just give her a little shave. And you get that where it slides in nice and it's easy and simple. Now these these long set screws are going in the blind holes. So you don't want to just go all ham with your driver and drive them home. When you do it by finger, I can feel right there. That's bottoming out. It's time to stop. You do it by hand. When you do it by hand, you can feel that. These go in at an angle, see? Like that. I'm running the bends toward the, I've been running the bends further up towards the uh, skid on this build. Eh, because I like it. You can run them either way, whichever works better for you and your terrain and what you like. Hopefully none of y'all sitting there here in that washer run have to, it's gonna make you run and go run off and go pee. Oh, now she's running. This one's gonna be a pain. There it went.
All right, feels good. All right, now. Now, same as this goes, long arms go to the rear. So we're gonna bolt our skid back up to this now. Just these little short screws here. I think these are M3 by 10 button heads. You thought I was going to do all that by hand. Nope. Now, the other side, we're going to put these upper screws in. So these are longer, like a 12 mil. Up here, going into these uh, these chassis braces. Flip her around. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna move on to our rear links. Now the rear links on the, on the Asylum mount from the inside to the outside. Here's what I mean. Where's a washer? I like to use a washer on anything by a rod in like that. Just like that. So if something happens, a big impact or whatever, and you can't just blow it out of there. You can't blow that thing off. So we're going to start kind of in the middle of the adjustment. But we're going screw heads on the inside of the chassis here. Because you need the room back here for uh, drive shafts and stuff. So that's why it's... That's why it is the way that it is. So I'm starting in this second from the top. Hold down. Repeat on the other side. Did I lose my washer? It appears I have lost a washer. I don't worry about it. Yeah, I'd like a washer here, but for the purpose of showing y'all, it's not necessary. You get the idea. Sorry here, guys. I'm trying to keep all this in frame. I'm sure I'll have this apart a couple more times before it's finished. There we go. Now there's your rears on. Now let's start with the uh, let's start with the front axle because well why not? I like to do this from the bottom. I don't know if it's right or wrong or who knows. But that's the way I like to set these up. I have all this sitting. Uh, it's, you're not in frame. I like to set these all up from the bottom. Why? I don't know. It's just the way I do it. Never mind these wires. I'll clean all that up later. So, grab our crazy long screw. 
Let's move some stuff around here. Got my pretty pink draft text. Going shorts all the way around on this beast. Like that. Bring in your link. Now I've discussed um, the differences between uh, axial and Traxxas rod ends in a few videos. We have both on the website. Or you can use, see how these fit a little loose. That's the, tra that's the Traxxas one versus the axial. You can put a little washer in there to tighten that slop up, which is, or get the other, get the axial size rod ends, which is what I'm gonna do later. But like I said, for the purpose of demonstration, this is plenty good enough. Another obtrusively long screw. Sorry for the, get my arm in the way there. Now this axle's without guts or knuckles right now. Cause I ordered them up so I could build them. And we were at ECC a couple of weeks ago and we had a customer roll up. And guess what he needed? He broke his axle and he needed parts to build another one. So, reached in my box of parts and sold him those parts. But that's okay. Don't over torque these. Um, if you see how this is a different size rod end, as I saw, it's not as wide. The axle is wider. If you over torque and bend this, this little part here, like this is a KYX housing. It's cheap. I got off a buddy of mine for next to nothing. That's why I have it. But if you bend this part here on your super shafty housings, that is a, it'll void your warranty. Now they'll warranty those for about anything. You can abuse them, anybody, you can throw at those things. But if you bend these here by over torquing this bolt and having the wrong size rod end here, they will not warranty that. So just be aware. So now we got our front sitting in the spot. We're gonna flip her over. Make sure I have it frame again so y'all can see what I'm doing. Now these mount to the outside of the chassis on the front. Because the front links are shorter than the rear, we had to, you know, set it up a little bit differently to make all that fit proper. And once again, I'm just going to start right in the middle of the adjustment with the upper link of the chassis. We'll dial all that in, you know, perfectly later. As I'm tuning the truck, we'll get all that sorted out. Where's my handy dandy? Here we go. Oh, and the shock setup on these. These are uh, 96 millimeters all the way around. Um, I don't remember if I put a spacer in them. I don't believe I did. And uh, I'm running 30 weight oil on these. These are the, the newer style four hole pistons in these. So 30 weight seems like feels pretty good. Now, nope. let's get our front shocks mounted. Washer on the outside. And a spacer. New ultralight body mount. Now, with the way these body mounts are also your... These body mounts are also your chassis stays right there. You may want to try to get your suspension set up tuned in somewhat before you punch a bunch of holes in your body. Or use a nut here and move this in one. So that way if you move stuff around, you're not constantly changing your body mount positions, if that makes sense. Trying to keep out of frame, guys. There's your front end. All right, once again, we're gonna flip her over. Go to the back. Checks we got everything in frame, more or less. You see it. Turn the axle upside down. We're gonna start with the lowers. 
so another obtrusively long sh rear shock or rear, rear bolt bolt back here it's gonna block this front end up so it stops flopping around on me yeah that'll work so shock on the outside of the mount started grab another one like, whatever that's a long screw there hi -oh. that's what she said come here There we go. Snag these down. I explained why I'm using this rear axle earlier in the video. Like I said, I'm doing it because it's, it's a fun experience, like a mental experiment for me. Just to see if I can make it work like the way I think I want it to. Another super long screw. Trying to keep that speed down, like I said. Sorry guys, completely out of frame. My bad. Sometimes it's hard to like focus on what I'm doing and keep everything in frame, but we'll do what we can. Shock body mount. We're gonna go one hole in from the back here. So I built it all the way out the back earlier. It just looked like it was too tall for my my liking. As some of y'all I'm sure understand, I gotta build this stuff a couple times before I do it on video. One, that way I'm sure I'm not making it doing anything real dumb on video. Two I gotta figure out all the ways not to do stuff so I can show you the proper way. And third, well, I just don't wanna look any sillier than I already do on video with this stuff. All right, now. Zoom out here. Excuse my messy bench, y'all. I got parts and Ziploc bags and sh everywhere. So here you go. Now, next step, transmission. I've already put a motor on this transmission. This is a used transmission I've had for a little while. So that's why it's dusty. This is a 14 turn Holmes Hobbies Cobalt Puller 454. Another old motor that I haven't, that I've had for a little while and haven't had a chance to use on any, anything. It's pretty light. So I'm almost gonna use it on this project. So countersunk bolts for the transmission. To skid here. Let's 
It's hard to see what I'm doing there. What I'll do is I'll, there you go. Pull it in tight, back that one off a little bit. Turn her over. Line up our other hole. Now, the stress again, don't over torque these. They may be good and tight, but don't don't tear them up. Because, you know, you don't want to buy another case for your transmission. And there you go. If you notice, and we'll zoom back in. If you notice, this motor's canted at a bit of an angle. It's that way on purpose. Um, it's not a fault, it's a feature, as it were. <laughs> um, nope, that's for drive shaft clearance to the front here. And if you look closely here, you see we ran this screw backwards? That's for your drive shaft clearance also. Now you can move this to the outside if you wish. But we'll keep it on the inside just to keep our, tri our triangulation the way we want it. Now, thing to note, if you're being silly like me, zoom back out, and build this with a TRX4 rear axle, that rear link, I mean, you can move that drive shaft. You can thread these out here a little bit, twist that drive shaft up, or, uh, you know, put a longer rod end on these links here. But there's nothing to say with a little bit of tweaking. You can't put a TRX4 rear with a capper front on this truck. Now how it works, I'll be sure to let you know. I'm gonna build some tires for it and get my drive shafts in on it, get it all wired up, and then we'll get some video of it running, testing. We're gonna test that theory I, theory I had. You know, see if having more gear reduction in the axles, their most gear reduction in the axles you can get, as is as advantageous as I think it'll be inside my head. So, oh! While we're here, where are they at? Let's discuss these body mounts. We're going to zoom back in. Sorry about the thing spinning around there. We dialed in on the front there. Yeah, let's do that. If we order these lightweight body mounts. I'll show you how they work. Most of the stuff's pretty common sense. you got to be like, oh, really, Matt? I already know this. You don't need to show me. I'm going to show you anyway because there's one guy in the back that's like, hey, man, how's this going to go? So here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to drop it because, you know, why wouldn't we? Then we're going to get our proper driver because that's a long set screw and we're not running that on by hand. We're going to start with putting it through our, uh, this is our plate. Your body's going to fit up against this plate. going to be like that, is it? That's going to fight me every inch, huh? There we go. Ow! That screw's already hot. Just like, like burn my hand right there a little bit. Sort of like so. We're going to run that on down through. Now, gonna come with a set screw or not set screw just a, a non nylock three millimeter nut we're gonna put that on there like like so now we're just for the sake of you know conversation that's that's our ride height that's where we want it for our body we're gonna thread this into here. Okay, we're gonna spin this just for, that way you can see it better. We'll spin that home, like so. Then you tighten this jam nut down here. Make sure you got full thread engagement right there. So you can tighten this jam nut, and there you go, body mount. So if you leave it, you can get all that started. Sorry, I know the fingers in the way. Can't see anything, Matt. Move your giant sausage fingers. See, there's your thumb screw. 
And you can also, you can loosen this jam nut. And you can adjust the height, the height, the whole height of this thing. And the jam nut's going to catch. Spin that up out of the way. You can adjust the whole height of this body mount from the outside. So there, there's, let's say there's capturing, capturing your Lexan body. Run that down. Well, unless your jam nut. You can run that down till that's flush with your, your top of your thumb screw. Like that, right? Ain't gonna catch on nothing. Now, you can tighten up your, uh, tighten up your jam nut. And then when you snug up your shock bolt, like so, there's your body mount. Tucked in pretty. So that's how that works. You can put that jam nut top or bottom, wherever it is you like, wherever you have room for it, depending on your setup. But there's your little rundown on the, the new, newest, lightest body mounts we have. So yeah, pretty sweet. Repeat the same on the rear. And Bob's your uncle. Well guys, zoom back out here. I think this is a pretty good view on the Asylum, how you build it. Y'all know how to do cut drive shafts. We've covered that before. You know how to mount loaded dies and do all that fun stuff and build knuckles. So if you got any questions, post them in the thing below. We can talk about it, discuss it. Think I'm building, being silly, mixing and matching axles? Tell me about it. I'm happy to hear it. I just, like I said, curious on, uh, I want to try something different. So we're going to. All right, guys. Have a good day. Thanks. See ya.